how easy we make it. We don't show up for the fight. We don't show up for the battle. Of course we're losing the war. There are strategies and tactics. I'm going to take a few moments to tell you about one. One of the most interesting experiences of my life. It was the 1960s. I was reading a textbook, a communist textbook, about something called uh, the Squad Diamond Tactic. Squad Diamond Tactic was a tactic whereby, the comrades said, you can go into a meeting with uh, maybe 60 or 100 people, a typical meeting, a small local group, and if you have four people, you can dominate that meeting using the Squad Diamond Tactic. Oh, really? What is this all about? So here it is. The Squad Diamond is named after a military formation. Uh, those of you who've been in the, in the uh, infantry, 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 you know that um, when, you, when the uh, platoon goes through hostile territory, they'll carry your weapons like this, you don't go in a straight line or a phalanx because it's so easy for snipers to know where the next person is. They get one and then the other one is right in front of it or next to it. So you never use a straight line or a straight vertical or horizontal line. You form into a diamond. And the, the platoon leader says, squat diamond, and everybody gets in their position. So it's, easy, it's not so easy to find the next guy. So the squat diamond tactic is when you go to a meeting that you want to uh, dominate in some way, maybe you want to get somebody uh, nominated uh, to a position, or you want to heckle a speaker, or what, maybe you just want to break up the meeting and they list all the things you can do with a squat diamond. I'm reading this thinking, wow, this, this thing really goes on. So then what you do is you, you go in and you deploy your forces. One man or woman at the front, one at the back, and one at each side. And there's your four. That's the diamond shape. And if you have more, then you complete the diamond with more people, but never put them in the center. The idea is that the people on the perimeter will start whatever action you decide, and it will force all the people in the middle to have to turn their heads and look around and oh, and they feel surrounded. It's a psychological thing. And that's the whole, this is the training that they do. Make the people feel that they are in the minority, even though they're in the majority. Yes. So I thought, well, this is interesting. Uh, maybe we'll try this. So we tried it. I, I kind of noticed that there was a meeting to be held, I think it was a Thursday night, at the uh, Young Democrats Club in a little... Well, it was, yeah, Young Democrats Club. Well, but, but the meeting was to honor, to honor the speaker, uh, the fellow by the name of, um, uh, let's see, I wrote his, yeah. Oh, Frank Wilkinson, that was his name, yeah, Frank Wilkinson. Now, that doesn't mean anything to you, probably, but back in the days when the uh, Communist Party USA was, uh, full bore trying to discredit the House Committee on Un-American Activities and the Senate Security, Internal Security Subcommittee, the two committees that were investigating communist infiltration in the United States, the Communist Party naturally had to discredit them and, and they were doing a good job by saying that they were un-American because they were, you know, questioning people's political beliefs and ruining their reputation and they were a bunch of McCarthyites and that was its the general line that they were using, and most Americans were buying into that. Um, so that was Frank Wilkinson's mission. He was a, um, a very professorial type. You, you listened to him speak and watched him, and you would swear he was a professor at some local university. And he spoke very soft-spokenly, and he used sesquipedalian words, you know, that you, what does that mean, and so forth. He was a very intellectual type of guy. But we knew who Frank Wilkinson was. He was, uh, he was a known member of the Co uh, Communist Party in Southern California. He was, in fact, uh, on their leadership group. He was the man in charge of their security division, which that was the, uh, the division in charge of uh, playing rough. That's where they intimidated people and uh, uh, would do physical things with people. That was the security division, they called it. And he was in charge of that. He was also in charge of, um, he was the man that went to all of the college universities 
and spoke against the House Committee on Un-American Activities and the Security, uh, uh, the Senate Security Subcommittee. And uh, he was very good at his job. I had heard him speak once before, and it almost made me want to jump up and say, yeah, down with the Un-American Activities Committee, because he was good. But I knew who he was and what his mission was, and so everybody in my group. So we decided that we would go to this meeting and see what fun we could have with Frank Wilkinson. Now, he was at the top of his class and what he did, so we knew we were up against professionals. So we went, and we thought we had um, six people. Turned out we had four that showed up, and I was there as one of the four. But it said in the manual, four was enough, so in we went. <laughs> so I took my position on the side, I remember it well, the right side, and somebody on the left side, and we had our four positions. And so Frank Wilkinson gave his uh, dissertation about how un-American it was to question communist activity in America. And uh, so when he was all done, are there any questions? <laughs> well, that was our moment. I jumped on. So I have a question, Mr. Wilkinson. Oh, yes, what is it? Uh, According to this, uh, this report I'm reading here that uh, there was a member of the Communist Party in um, Los Angeles that says that uh, they attended Communist Party meetings with you. Is this true, sir? And he turned right. He said, you're just exactly the kind of McCarthy, the kind of person I'm talking about. You're bringing, you know, questioning my loyalty, my Americanism, and it's over. You're the very kind of person I'm talking about. And everybody looked at me like I was a piece of dirt. You know? I thought, well, this is not going well. <laughs> but the show had just begun. <laughs> yeah, the next thing I said, yeah, but Mr. Wilkinson, so-and-so says that, that didn't you, uh, weren't, aren't you the head of the of security division of the Communist Party in Southern California? Isn't that true? And he's tried the same thing on this guy. Well, by this time, well, the, the arrow was dented. This time, you know? And... Uh, and then number three and number four did their part and was re reciting from investigative uh, reports on this guy. And, and the group got a pretty good idea of who he really was. And at that point, there was a, well, first of all, I have to tell you, most of this, these people were students. They were young, young Democrats. That was the name of the club, right? And, and uh, most of them were students, but there were a couple of working guys in there, you know? Looked like they had just come from the assembly line, big, big bruisers, dirt under their fingernails, you know, and blue shirts and so forth. They were real workers. The Democrat Party is supposed to be for workers, not college students. But, and this one guy stood up and he says, if this is the kind of speakers that this club brings in, he says, I just joined this blankety blank organization. <laughs> and he tears up his membership card and strides out like that. And blow me down if two more people don't jump up and say, yeah, me too, you know? And the meeting was over. <laughs> now, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I thought we were going to be assassinated. You know? <laughs> so when we got through, uh, the four of us, oh, by the way, when you go in, part of the instruction manual says, don't, don't let it be known that you're together. You don't come in together. It's, you know, you're unknown to each other. It's, it's deception. It's what they're teaching, you know. And so we went out to the coffee shop, you know. We're all shaking. We, we've just been in battle, you know. <laughs> and uh, so we're sitting there drinking our coffee, and in walks Frank Wilkins and with two or three of his buddies. Now, had they used the same tactic on us, they would have completely neutralized us. But they didn't. They weren't expecting us us to do that. So they they walk in and they walk by the booth where we were sitting. <laughs> He's backed up. And he leaned over, I'll never forget this, practically in my face. He says, who are you people? <laughs> he knew that we were united, that we were doing the same damn tactics that they were using. Now there's just a little microcosmic glimpse of why we are losing this war is because we haven't been on the battlefield. They've had it so easy. They do that sort of thing all the time at meetings. And we sit around and say, oh gosh, I guess everybody wants this, you know. And it's not true. It's time for us to get organized and fight back. That's where the battleground is. It's not on the, fortunately, it's not on a battlefield with guns. 
yet. Not yet. The real battlefield is in the organizational meeting rooms of the power centers of society. That's where the battle will be won. That's where the battle was lost. And if we wish to retain and regain our, our liberties, that's where the battle will be won again.